All right, guys, let's take a look at the RL series circuits. Uh, these are the equations that we need. So we've got in class, we, we've done is we've looked at the series circuit with the resistance and the inductance. And we know that current is the same through the series circuit. So just as we talked about in week one, it's a series circuit, so the current is the same. So we know that IT is equal to IR is equal to IL. Same current going all the way through. Now, but because we have different animals in here, the resistance and the inductance, then our voltages are out of phase. And what's cool is that the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across this purely inductive uh, coil here are 90 degrees out of phase. So here we can see here that uh, we're based off of the Eli rule for a coil where the voltage leads and the current lags. So our current is our reference here because it's the same all the way through the circuit. And so our inductive current is leading. And that causes a phase shift. And we can look at uh, our resistive voltage here, our inductive voltage here, and we can find our total voltage right here using Pythagorean's theorem. So if we have, uh, let's see, VT would be here, this would be VR, and this would be VL. So we can use this equation here in order to find our total voltage, right? VT is equal to VR plus VL, sorry, VR squared plus VL squared, and then take the square root. Now we can use that exact same equation all the way through. For the impedance, you can see here that the triangle is, impedance is the hypotenuse, resistance is the adjacent, and XL is the opposite. Okay, so again, we can use Pythagoras in order to find our, our total impedance, and total VA, or total volt amps, is equal to our true power squared, plus our VAR squared, our reactive power squared, and we'll take the screw to find our VA. Okay, in addition to that, we've got XL is equal to 2 pi FL for our coil. Uh, you can find it here, and if you need to change it to find L, it's XL divided by 2 times pi times frequency. Finally, for power factor, it is the watts over the VA, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. R over Z, adjacent over hypotenuse. And VR over VT, adjacent over hypotenuse. These are supposed to be the exact same triangle, exact same angle, exact same ratio between each of them. And they're all based off of cos with the adjacent and the hypotenuse. And if we need to find the angle, we'll take the inverse cos of that power factor. Okay, so first example, let's take a look. We've got uh, this guy right here. We've got um, our circuit with 240 volts, single phase at 60 hertz, 30 ohms and 40 ohms. So this one's from our textbook. They love the 3, 4, 5 ratio here. So let's bang off this one. Uh, we've got the voltage, but the, remember the voltage happens at different times throughout the circuit. Uh, so we can't bring the voltage across. We don't know what the current is yet, uh, but we do have two values here being 30 and 40 ohms, and we can use those guys in order to find our total impedance. Okay, if we go back and look at our equations here, our equation for impedance is resistance squared plus XL squared. Take the square root there. So with this one, we've got uh, 30 squared plus 40 squared. We'll take the square root, and that provides it with a total impedance of 50 ohms. So let's just write this in. We've got 30 squared plus the 40 squared. You may need to use double brackets depending on your calculator. We'll take the square root of everything, and our total impedance ends up being 50 ohms. They love that 3, 4, 5 triangle there. Well, now we've got two values. And anything right here with the voltage, the current, and whatever form of resistance is going to be Ohm's law. Okay, so let's just put in our 50 ohms here just to clean things up. And here, in order to find our total current, we're going to take the 240 volts. We're going to divide it by 50 ohms. And that gives us a total current of 4.8 amps. We're keeping track of all our steps here. This is the first thing we did. This is the second thing we did. Now, it's a series circuit, so that current can rock across here. Beauty, 4.8 amps right across. 
Okay, we don't have a capacitor in there, so we don't need to find anything for the capacitor value. But now we can find all other other values. We have two uh, values in all of these columns here. So maybe the next thing we want to find is our resistive voltage. Okay, everything is Ohm's law here. It doesn't matter if we're looking at VT, IT, and Z, or VR, IR, and R, or VL, IL, and XL. Everything is Ohm's law. So here, if we wanted to find... Um, Let's just draw our Ohm's Law equation here. For all of these guys, we've got voltage, current, and some form of resistance, right? So for these guys, all of our voltages, they're going to be equal to our current, in this case, 4.8 amps, times our 30 ohms. And across the resistor, we've got 144 volts. So we have 240 volts as the source, this is at 60 hertz. All of these guys are going to be at 60 hertz. If I can draw that in. Beauty. And we just found that uh, this voltage right here is 144 volts. Nice. Next thing we need to do is find uh, the voltage across the coil. Again, it doesn't matter uh, what we're looking at. We have VL. IL and we don't have resistance in this part but we have XL for our cannery MF for our magnetic resistance for the coil okay we're keeping the resistance of the coil completely negligible it's mostly magnetic resistance or inductive reactance which we're talking about okay so here we have 4.8 amps and that's going through 40 ohms of magnetic resistance and that gives us a voltage drop of 192 volts. Okay. At that point, you're like, what is going on? I got 144 volts on the resistor. I got 192 volts on the coil. They don't sum to give me 240. What is going on? I thought Kirchhoff's law was that this voltage and this voltage sum to give you this guy right here. Well, they do. But this voltage and this voltage are 90 degrees out of phase. They don't happen at the same time. So using Pythagorean theorem, 144 squared plus 192 squared square root will give you a value that's very close to 240. So the beauty of the chart method is that you can go back and forth and find all your values. Right here with these guys, these guys, and these guys, we can use Ohm's law. And going back and forth here, in each of these rows, we can use Pythagoras. Okay, current's the same all the way through. 30 squared plus 40 squared square root gives you 50. 144 squared plus 192 squared square root gives you 240. Beauty, all of these guys all the way across for power, these guys are all just voltage times current. So here we have 240 volts times what? 4.8 amps. That is gonna give us 1152 VA. Here we've got 144 volts times 4.8 amps. That gives us 691.2 watts. Okay, the VA is the combination of both the wattage and the VARS. And the VARS is our mag kind of our potential energy that's held in the magnetic field. And we can find that by taking 192 volts times our current. 4.8 amps voltage times current that gives us 921.6 vars and we're just going to be able to put a little subscript l for the coil beauty we can double check those values 691.2 watts squared plus 921.6 vars squared square root will give you 1152 va okay what are we up to we're at step four this would be step five and it's essentially the same thing right across here. Okay, next we need to find our inductance. So we know that um, the equation for XL is equal to 2 times pi times frequency times L. So L is going to be equal to XL divided by 2 times pi times frequency. Okay, so for this guy we've got 40 ohms divided by 2 times pi times our frequency at 60 hertz, which is essentially, if you take 2 times pi times 60, it's very close to 377. 
So it's 40 ohms divided by 377. And our inductance value, which is like the physical properties of the coil, ends up being 0 0.106 on Rees. Okay. Next thing we need to do is find the power factor. We've got everything here. All right, this was step six. Okay, we'll just clean this up, get rid of this guy. You can always stop and reverse back if you missed that. The last thing we need to find is our power factor. Power factor is the efficiency of the circuit. It is mo usually 691.2 watts divided by 11.52 VA. That gives you 60% efficiency. The textbook loves this ratio here. 60% efficiency, uh, if you do the inverse cos of 0.6, it's going to give you an angle of 53.13 degrees. Remember when we were talking about trig and we talked about sine, cos, and tan, and we used that 3, 4, 5 triangle to show that all of those guys, all the ratios were same, basically based off the same angle. Well, that angle was 53.13 degrees for a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Okay, keeping track of our steps here, this guy was step eight, 7, sorry, this was step 8, and we are done. Okay, so basically what you need to do is you need to first see whether you have two values here where you can do Ohm's Law. It's a series circuit, so we're trying to find the current as fast as possible because we can rock that across and then use that to find additional values. So we were stuck, we had to do our impedance first. Then we used our impedance with Ohm's law, with the voltage and the impedance to find our current. Our current came across, and that gave us our individual voltages. After that, we went through, did voltage times current to find our VA, watts, and vars. We used our XL in order to find our L, the physical properties of the coil. That's like the number of turns, really. It's type of core and gauge wire and everything, but we're just going to simplify that down to the number of turns. And then finally, we wanted to find the efficiency of the circuit. The efficiency of the circuit seems like it sucks. We've got uh, 30 divided by 50, giving us 60%. 691.2 watts divided by 1152 VA gives us 60% efficiency as well. And 144 volts divided by 240 volts for our total gives us 60% as well. That means that the voltage and the current are 53.13 degrees out of phase. So if we wanted to make this a little bit better, um, we'd have to change some of the values in the circuit, or we could possibly put in a capacitor to try and fix things up. But we'll do that in a bit. We'll do a number of different RL series circuits. So there are, I believe, five examples plus the initial example. So there's like six different examples you can go through. Keep banging these through, try and get as much of these equations in your head, and then when we look at uh, subsequent circuits with RC, RLC ser series, and RLC parallel, uh, it'll make it a lot easier. You can always reference back to uh, this page here, where you've got all your equations, and what you might want to do is sit down one night and put down each of the circuits, so for this one for RL series, Draw out an RL series circuit and then try and put all of the equations on the page and then double check against this one. Then you can memorize uh, most of the equations. All right, guys. Thanks very much. We'll see you guys on the second one.